again. Welcome to week five of year two uh, of the Religious Education Initiative. This is day two. Uh, we're going to read an excerpt from a homily of St. Basil the Great. Uh, in both of our day one and our day three readings this week, we are talking, among other things, about demons, about fallen angels, those who are in rebellion against God, and about their connection to human sin and the brokenness of the world. In the Bible, though, while we often see angels and demons talked about, we never get a really clear explanation of how they came to be evil, in the case of divinity, and why angels aren't evil. So today we will read a passage from a sermon of St. Basil the Great where he talks about how the devil came to be evil. Now we come to the question about the devil. From where does the devil come if evils are not from God? And that evil does not come from God is Basil's larger point here. So he says, what then shall we say? That the same argument that was offered regarding wickedness in the human being also helps us in this inquiry. But for what reason is the human being evil? Because of his freedom of choice. For what reason is the devil evil? For the same reason, the devil possesses a life endowed with self-determination, and the authority rests in himself either to remain with God or to become estranged, to separate himself, to become a stranger from what is good. Gabriel is an angel, and he stood by God continually. Satan is an angel, and he fell away from his proper place entirely. The free choice of the one, of Gabriel, kept him in things above, and the self-determination of the other, of Satan, threw him down. For the one, Gabriel, could have become an enemy, and the other, Satan, need not have fallen. But Gabriel was preserved by his insatiable love of God, while his withdrawal from God showed Satan to be worthless. Evil consists in estrangement, separation from God. With a small turning of the eye, we are either facing the sun or facing the shadow of our own body. Thus, one who looks upward easily finds illumination, but for one who turns toward the shadow, darkening is inevitable. Thus, the devil is wicked because he possesses wickedness by free choice, not through a natural opposition to the good. Why does he fight against us? Because, being a receptacle of all evils, he also accepted the disease of malice and envied our honor, for he could not bear our life free from pain in paradise. With tricks and contrivances he thoroughly deceived the human being, and misusing the desire the human being had for likeness to God to deceive him, Satan showed him the tree and promised that through eating it he would be made like God. For if you eat, he said, you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. Accordingly, he was not fashioned as our enemy, but out of jealousy he stood against us in enmity. For seeing himself thrown down from among the angels, he could not bear to see the earthly one lifted through progress to the rank of the angels. So there are a couple points that we need to emphasize. First, the presupposition here, a simple, pure statement of fact. God does not make evil. God doesn't cause evil. God doesn't look at, uh, at the world and say, this world is boring. Let's make some evil to make it exciting. That, that's not the point. God, though, he makes us free. Not just us human beings. He also makes the angels free free to choose. He gives us the choice to decide whether we will love him or whether we will hate him, whether we will serve him or whether we will oppose him. And he makes the point, he compares the archangel Gabriel and Satan. He says both of them have the same choice, have the same ability, have the same capacity. Gabriel chose to be faithful. Satan chose to rebel. The choice was his. And then he explains a little bit why Satan fell. He says, well, Satan looked at human beings who 
were not even bodiless powers. They were physical, they seemed low, they seemed weak, they knew nothing, they had no power, and yet he understood that God intended to raise them up and make them very high, very uh, lofty indeed. Uh, and in jealousy for that, he decided to rebel, to oppose them. Uh, and we can understand from this too why it is that the demon, that the devil and Satan, uh, that, that is to say the devil, Satan, uh, always tries to lead human beings astray because that is how he can defeat God. If he can take the creatures, us, that God made to be vessels of grace and to be glorified and exalted and become like himself, if he can make us the enemies of God, that doesn't mean he'll win, he won't become God himself, but he can destroy what God is trying to accomplish. It's an act of jealousy, an act of destruction, an act of nihilism. Uh, at least this is how it would be for us, and we can see those tendencies in human beings, in agents with free will uh, in this world as well. So it's not that surprising. Um, what's the, uh, the conclusion? We shouldn't end dwelling on the demons. Uh, we should dwell on our choice uh, and the great gift that is given to us. We are given the ability to choose, and we are invited to choose to follow the Lord, to be faithful in all things. And when we are faithful, as we saw uh, on day one, we can be raised up. We are invited to become even like Enoch, like Elijah, like Panagia, like all the saints. We are called to become like God, uh, to be raised up even to the heights, the, the heights and the offices that the demons forsook out of jealousy. So this is what we are called to. This is what we are offered. This is what we are given to choose or reject with the free will that God has given to us. Uh, the angels have the same choice. This is how there came to be demons and why they hate us. And let's call it a day today. I'll see you all on day three. God bless you.